Good morning. It is good being here at the house. I am absolutely honored to be with each and every one of you. Bless you and thank you. Uh, Dr. Thomas, thank you. Thank you for this, uh, for this true, true honor. And to, to Chairman Woods, to our administrators, to the alumni, and, uh, and also if I can just give a, a personal point of privilege when I say alumni, if I could ask uh, Dr. Trailer from the class of 53 to just stand real quick and just say uh, how, how beautiful it is to see you a member of the class of 1953. And Dr. Trailer, while it's wonderful to see you, I have to say, it's good seeing you, Uncle Trey. That's my godfather. So I hope by getting this honorary degree, I made you proud, sir. <laughs> I, am, uh, I am incredibly thankful to be here also with the remarkable faculty, the remarkable staff, the remarkable team here, all the members of the board to include my friend and my Maryland brother, Reverend Coates. It's great to see you as well, sir. It's great to be with you. And also to this amazing class who's standing in front of me here, the class of 2023. Congratulations, y'all. Now, I, 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 did, I didn't go to Morehouse, um, but I had the privilege and I have the privilege of calling many Morehouse men friends and advisors and mentors. I have personally witnessed the, the, the kindness and the courage and the confidence that truly does define that measure of Morehouse mystique. The idea that, that makes this place so special. And so very soon for each of you, you are gonna walk across this stage and in that moment, each of you will go from being a man of Morehouse to a Morehouse man. And it's a title that you're going to hold on to the rest of your life. But it's a title that says so much more than just about where you went to school. It says you're a man of strong character and a disciplined mind. It says that you're a man of vision and virtue. It says that you got all of your crown form credits in. It's a title that each and every one of you shouldn't just be proud of, but you've earned it. You've earned this. And it's a title that I know for all of you that you are gonna be very proud, and, and, and I know you will be very proud to be a Morehouse man because uh, as the saying goes, how do you know you're in a room with a Morehouse man? They'll tell you in the first three minutes of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is, the reason they're going to tell you is because there is a common pride that Morehouse men share. And it's not just a pride in yourself, and it's not just a pride in your accomplishments. It's a pride in your history. And graduates and graduations are by nature a celebration of the future. But I want to spend a minute just to talk a little bit about the past. I want to spend a minute to talk to you a little bit about history. Because while each of you work very hard to get here, this degree is not a product of your hard work alone. As a black man in America, we know that our present is a result of the fights and the struggles and the victories of the past. We are here because there were people who marched. We are people because there are, we are here because there are people who prayed over generations. We're here because there are people who fought for you and they didn't even know you. People who didn't even know you, but they believed in the hope of you. People who believed in the hope of you and they knew that they would not get a chance to see the realization of their sacrifice in their own lifetimes. People honored here on Century Campus, where Dr. King studied, where Dr. Mays is laid to rest, where Union soldiers died for freedom. 
These individuals and their struggles have served as the foundation of our fortune. And because of them, you are standing on a foundation that is, as said in Psalm 61, a rock that is higher than I. Do not forget the rocks that you are standing on, men of Morehouse. Those rocks are the rocks that allow you to stand tall. They're the rocks that allow you to see so far. They're the rocks that allow you to hold your head so high that you can reach the crown of expectations laid before you. You stand on the rocks of generations. And since, and since history is one of the things that helped you to get here, it's the very thing that's gonna help you to move forward. I come here today knowing that history helped guide me. Because a few years ago, no one could have believed that I could have been elected governor of my state. And <laughs> it wasn't just because I was polling at 1% either. And that's true. The first poll that we took, I looked and, and I was polling 1%. I'm not voting was polling higher than Westmore. <laughs> but it wasn't just because of that that people didn't think that I could become governor. It's because no one thought the people who looked like you and me could actually lead Maryland. A state that was once the home of one of the largest slave ports in America. A state that even into the 20th century still had black men lynched in their own streets and in their own neighborhoods. A state that was the birthplace and the proving grounds of redlining and other discriminatory and predatory housing pro and housing policies that have served as one of the greatest wealth thefts that we have seen in our nation's history. That history is still fresh. And that history is still being felt. So in the early days of our campaign, people would ask me, they say, how do you possibly think that you can win? And my answer was simple because I know our full history. Because Maryland has a long and a troubled history, absolutely, but Maryland also has a history of courage, a history of leaders and thinkers and writers and scholars, people who struggled but had the strength to overcome. And their contributions paved the way not just for me to run for office, but their stories helped me to see the path. People like Reginald Lewis helped me see the path, who was the first black man to build a multi-billion dollar company in the history of the United States of America. People like Cab Calloway helped me to see the path, who's one of the first black men to break the color barrier in the entertainment industry. Lily Mae Jackson helped me to see the path. She founded the Baltimore City NAACP and is known as the mother of the civil rights movement. Benjamin Banneker helped me to see the path. Who typified black excellence and black ingenuity. And after a lifetime of success, left this message for future generations. Never abandon your vision. Keep reaching to further your dreams. On the campaign trail, I spoke about our history, our history openly. And in the privacy of my own home, and particularly on the hard days, I studied this history and it refueled my faith. I studied these bold, brave men and women, and I saw the hatred and horror in their time and how they pushed on anyway. Their grandeur enlarged by the terror that they faced. Men of Morehouse, I stand before you as the first black governor of my state and only the third black governor ever to be elected in the history of this country with a very simple message. Our history is our power. And I've come to tell you this, that we have got to hold our history close because life will test you. And when it does, your history will give you the power to meet the challenge. 
Because out in the world, people will seek to minimize your history. Out in the world, people will seek to rewrite your history. Out in the world, many people will seek to have you forget your history. I look around the country and I see book banning. I'm looking around the country right now and I'm seeing people being censored, teachers being censored. I see curriculum of truth being taken out. This is not just a threat to our history, it is a threat to our strength. When politicians ban books and muzzle educators, they say it's an effort to prevent discomfort and guilt. But we know that's not true. This is not about a fear of making people feel bad. It is about a fear of people understanding their power. This is a fear of you realizing that you come from a long line of titans, of visionaries, of dreamers, of pioneers, of people who defied the odds and helped build this nation with their hands, their hearts, and their minds. And what is happening now with our history, it's just the beginning. I fear we are watching the early decay of a deep rot that threatens to hollow out our future by eliminating our past. Those who yearn to destroy history will not stop at our history. They will go after the history of those we know too. I'm talking about our friends in the indigenous community. I'm talking about our friends in the Jewish community. I'm talking about our friends in the Asian community. I'm talking about our friends in the gay community. I'm talking about our mothers and daughters and our sisters. I'm talking about everybody in this country who has ever been a part of the American story. And who we are watching the stories of those who came before us be wiped away. A threat to any history is a threat to all history. When a student is put under investigation by their school after delivering a presentation on the Stonewall riots, that doesn't just hurt the LGBTQ community. It's coming after us all. When a book about the life and achievements of baseball legend Roberto Clemente is banned, that doesn't just hurt the Puerto Rican community. They're coming after all of us. When a school board revises curriculum to edit out writings on Japanese internment in America, it does not just hurt the AAPI community, it is hurting us all. And I can think of few greater threats to this nation than this threat to history. Because this threat is gonna have lasting consequences. Not only because those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it, but because those who do not learn their past will never learn their own power. And today I'm calling on each and every one of you, the entire class of 2023, to confront this threat as you move on to the next stage of your life. Celebrate your history unapologetically. Tell others about your history and challenge those who would diminish that history. Collect pieces of history, books by black poets, films by black artists, understand the lives of black leaders. Surround your life with the emblems of our past, knowing it isn't enough to be a passive recipient of history. You must be an active custodian. That understanding our history drives my intentionality. And that intentionality underscores my azimuth. On the morning of my inauguration, I asked a group of a few hundred people to join me at the Annapolis docks to honor the enslaved men and women who had been taken there against their will. We had a wreath laying ceremony. And then we marched to the State House, a place that was built by enslaved people. 
And in that location is where I was sworn in as the 63rd governor of the state of Maryland. And immediately after we did that, the attacks came. People who said he is using his first moments as governor for indoctrination. <laughs> and my response was simple. This is not indoctrination. This is history. We organized that ceremony at the docks with intentionality. Not to diminish anyone, but to empower everyone. We did it with love, not to inspire guilt, but to inspire strength. And that strength gave us power. And it's a strength that I dream of for all of you. The strength of generations. Men of Morehouse, I need you to become lifelong learners and loyal ambassadors of our history. It is the only way ahead. And then, I need you to take that history and use it to make history of your own. Every great champion has used what's come before them to accomplish the next great task. By understanding the past, you understand the path. And by understanding the path, you will help blaze that trail, helping our schools, promoting economic empowerment, creating pathways to work, wages, and wealth, not just for some, but for all. Providing second chances for people returning from incarceration so we are making every sentence a life sentence. Calling on our fellow citizens to serve and participate in a movement that doesn't just pave over the cracks, but actually works to fix the foundation. As you move along the path of your history, you will see these themes etched into the paving stones, pointing us forward. You must learn the path because our future depends on it. In 100 years from now, a new generation of Morehouse men will be gathered right here, preparing to take their next steps. And the trail in front of them is going to be pioneered by you. You will be the rocks that they will stand on. So practice your history, protect your history, and participate in your history by making history of your own. I am calling on you to recognize the power of your history and to use it for the betterment of all of our mankind. Choose to confront the ugliness of our past without fear. Choose to confront the hardship of our present without hesitation. Choose to move the earth by the power of your own hand and the power of your own will. And hold close the stories of those who came before you. Because those stories, they're gonna make you invincible. Out in the world, the arrows will be sharp and the swords will be strong, but history is gonna be your armor. History will protect you. History will inspire you. History will nourish you, it will teach you, it will guide you, and history will save you. And then you will turn around and save us. Thank you, congratulations, honor to be part of this lineage, and continue to move forward and lead us all valiantly. God bless you, Morehouse, now and always.